Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to episode 2 of D6. Dungeon Dudes, Dames, Danger, Dice, and Dragons. We're getting ready to play our second full turn. And I just wanted to talk about two things real quick first. Uh, one is, someone pointed out that I had two dungeons in this space. I saw the creators do this in a play session and, and I noticed that, that actually, I, here's what I like about these guys. Uh, they embrace the true spirit of gaming. It's about fun, not about rules, right? So while we try to, we always want to adhere to the rules as best we can. I saw them doing things and like putting random rules on their board, like I'm going to put this thing in the middle of the ocean and it's going to affect everything that touches it, and it, that's not even part of the game, right? But they did that because that's how you play games. You play games to enjoy them, not to to uh, invoke rules all the time. So um, we're going to enjoy this game, but just for the sake of discussion. I did put two there. I said I did it. I said I did it on purpose, but I'm going to move it anyway. So there we go. It's going to Father's Den. How's that? That way we have them all nice and spread out. Uh, the second thing I want to point out is uh, someone, I guess I didn't, I don't know if they watched it all, but I did correct the movement of the wood, the, the woodling last turn when I actually skipped over the ocean because you can't do that. You got to go around uh, or the water there. So I just want to bring, point out those two things and then we're going to get right to our woodling's turn actually uh, for turn two. Um, and we're going to get right on that. So uh, let's do that and uh, start our new turn. Now we got a couple things we can do here. Of course, the first thing we do is we get our dice out and do our open gather, which allows us to um, uh, gather some new resources and put out new monsters. Okay, so here we go. We got a two and a four. So for the woodling, a two is going to be two coins. I'm just going to grab those out of the tray. Two more coins for the woodling. And for the uh, Slayer, a two is also going to be two coins, interestingly enough. So the Slayer is going to get a couple of coins as well. Slayer's got some bucks right now. Um, and then we're going to put a monster on the four space in Bry Bryox land, which I think we actually don't have a thing for. Uh, Minotaur is going on Bryox land. Now this one is benefited by a dungeon, but there isn't one there. Um, there is a um, cemetery there, which would benefit creatures that are undead, perhaps. Okay, but we still have to get to the harbor, the swamp, and the wastelands, and they're all, the only one close by is the harbor. We can go there, but there's a dragon. Anyway, that was the open gather roll for our woodling, and now we get to start taking turns. Um, what does she have that, that could be helpful? We have three coins, so we can take the paper shredder and turn it into a d20. Add one to, and then critical, go after that dragon. I think that might be the thing to do. And the reason being is because the dragon, uh, while it doesn't, uh, we can use that for any monster we want, which is a good thing. Um, we can also, remember, she also got that, the, but we have to get rid of that dragon because otherwise we're going to have to keep stealthing by it. So I think for her first action, we're going to gather just to get more stuff, right? Because that's always important. So we're going to go here. We're going to we roll a four. A four for her. And remember, this is not shared. A four for her is alchemy. So I think what we're going to do there is she is going to take. Um, she's going to take the uh, strict five potion, which allows her to add two to combat rolls. So I did that. I did that off camera. For her second action, she is simply going to move one space into Sweetwater Harbor to take on the dragon. And uh, we'll just engage that now. She still has an action left, but remember, um, engaging is not an action. I could spend... I'm going to keep the two coins in case I need a re-roll or something. So we got three coins right now. We're going to go at it with this dragon. We, we have these cards, so let's think about what we want to do here. She has all of her abilities. I do think we're going to play this, and we're going to use the three coins, actually, not for a re-roll or anything, but to bump that to a d20. So we're going to use the pay per shredder to bump her up to a d20. The dragon's at a d20, with no bonuses, by the way. And it says before combat, so before combat, you can pay. We did that. Okay, and then... Uh, I don't. I think I can play this advantage at any time. Uh, it says it doubles the the die roll. So let's see. I think we can do that. I don't think we have to do it now. And let's just roll and see what we get. See if a doubling the die roll will even help, right? Let's take it upon ourselves. Oh well, we got lucky. You didn't have to do that. We rolled a nine. It rolled a five. We killed the dragon. We've been getting very lucky on our rolls, which is a good thing. So uh, the that card is gone and we killed the dragon. Now the cool thing about the dragon is that we get to immediately place it 
on anywhere on a board to take up a monster. And I think what we'll do is so we don't have to deal with one later, maybe because they're tougher, we'll just take up this slot for the vampire right here on our board. So we're getting closer, but we're running out of turns. And we're not done yet, though, because she still has an action that she can take. And I think, let me think about what she's going to do. We need an undead in the harbor, but we don't have an undead on the board. So I don't think, I think we're going to, she still has a, uh, she doesn't have any other weapons left, but she still has her short bow. She still has some other bonuses. She can get plus one in combat. I think what we're going to do is, for her third action, she's going to hunt which means she's going to pull a creature into Sweetwater Harbor, and I'm hoping it's going to be an undead. We'll see. All right, let's see what we get here. We get a... not an undead. We get a goblin, a d6, and it does not get... it, it gets a bonus in hills, not in um, in a uh, trail. So we're going to have to, uh, of course, engage that uh, goblin, so let's do that. Okay, so right now, as it stands, both of our characters have d6s, but they have a plus one. We still have our critical... We still have this, so we're definitely going to use this. That'll give us even odds, and then I still have a potion I can take to add two to a combat roll. So, and I also have the critical. So let's roll and see what we get. Do I want to? No, I'm not going to even make it. Uh, make it I'm not going to use a skill either. We're just going to roll it off. Uh, well, gosh, we've been getting not. We've been getting kind of lucky. We're not that lucky here. So right now we have a d6 plus one. So this is a two. Sorry, all the way around. This is a three. We have a two right now. Um, I can do a couple of things here. I can take the potion. That will put us up to three and tie. A critical is not going to be that helpful. So I'll definitely drink the potion. right? And then I believe, I'm going to double check that we can do this, but I'm pretty sure that you can apply your skills after the roll as well. I think that's the point uh, to help mitigate dice. But uh, I'm just going to double check on uh, the skill use in combat and see what it says, just to be sure. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to, we just need a bonus of plus one. So we have Rigid Thorns. We're going to pop her, one of her skills into that, and that will allow us to defeat the Goblin. But uh, now we've used some stuff up. Over that said, we still have our critical, so we're going to defeat this Goblin. The good news is, this is another creature that we need to get on our board right there. And even though we're running out of time, we're starting to have some success. And that is going to be it. That, is, that was her third action. So that is going to be the end of her turn. Um, I don't have any... I, don't, I can't empty my pack. I can both get a free move. That might be useful. No. Yeah, I think... So we have this... Uh, okay, let's do this first. Now that she is going to rest mode, we're going to roll on here to place the last ten. Wow. What is... Uh, what's yours is mine. Your allies empty... Your ally empties one of their potions, and you fill yours. That's pretty clever. That's a good use of stuff for cooperative play. And we have, so we have this coordination that says both heroes may move one free space. I could do that and start to move, because um, both heroes, and we have some clear spaces. And I think what we're going to do there is this. We need to buy time, so we're going to use that ability. So I'm going to pop it. It's gone. I took it off the board. And we're going to move her there and him here, so that they, so that he can move. He can uh, actually try and pull an undead into the harbor again. And she, she's in the wasteland where she needs to get a poison critter, and we can use her fair or whatever to pull that spider in there, or the mushrooms that are in uh, the the this, these fields right here. And that will solve one of our bounties, which would be really, really good because we have not gotten one yet. And so we can do that on her turn, or he can just, well, no, because it's in the fields. He does not want to go in there and fight that. He wants to stay in the harbor. So that that marks the end of her turn officially. She's done. Let's move on to the Slayer, our Dragon Guard. Boy's got a ton of money, but he also gets to make another roll, so we're going to do that. Um, looking for our, my D10. Where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Okay, here's my D10. We're doing our open gather roll. We got a two and a two. A two for him. God, money bags right now. Two for him is two coins. And we're going to draw, so two more coins for him. He's got a lot of money. Two, four, five, six, seven right now. And then we're going to draw a monster and put it in two, which it happens to be where he, as you can see, where he is at. So, well, we'll show you that in a moment. Let's see what monster we draw. Let's see. Hopefully it's un... Oh my gosh, it's an undead. Did we get lucky that... No, that's the... S no, the harbor. We need undead. We have a mummy in the harbor. 
and he's got tons of cash. So here we go. This is a good thing for us. So we actually pulled a mummy into the harbor there. Now he's got some good stuff. So he's got the, these two items. This, he's got this D6 dagger of the dead, a plus three against undead. So we can use that and we can get a... Um, we can use uh, holy water to change our roll to a d12, our dice to a d12, and make sure we kill that thing. Or do we even have to? Anyway, let's start with our first action. Our first action is going to be because we're going to have to move as well. Let's let's start with taking on the mummy. Let's do that. We got enough stuff. Okay, there's our mummy. He is a d12 plus uh, a d8 plus two, so that's pretty nasty. But right now, if I do the, this for a d6 plus 3, got the monster trap for a d12. I don't have any potions, but I do have skills. Skills, skills, skills. So what we're going to do is we are definitely going to we're going to play the dagger of the dead, which means we're at a d6. But then we're going to buy holy water, which boosts our. Uh, and now, how do I know that? Let me show you. So on one of these placards, these rules placards, you can see holy water two coins to get d12 against undead. Well, we're going to do that. So there's the two coins we're going to spend, and that is going to give us a d12 instead of a d6, plus three. I think we're in good shape here. What do you think? Well, let's give it a try. we got d8 plus two versus d12 plus three. We have some skills still left over. Let's beat him. Okay, we, we succeeded. So that's a six, seven, eight. We got an eight, nine, ten, eleven. We defeated the mummy. Now, instead of uh, putting the mummy into our board, which we, we can't, we could actually do, we still have that available, we're going to take it as a bounty because we need to extend our turns, right? So you can see that the mummy right here is right, right there and matches along with this on the harbor where we're at. So we're going to put this on his um, player board right there. The mummy is going back into the bag. And as I understand it, we're going to then roll and place another critter out on the board from that. And this card, of course, goes away. That was a good use of a card and a good use of coin. Um, so let's see. We're going to place a critter out on... So when, I, when you get a bounty, my understanding is you re-roll and place another critter. So this can be in 10. We're going to have a um, mushroom in space 10. I'm going to double check that rule just in case I'm incorrect, but I don't think I am. Uh, and then we'll be right back to continue his turn. That was a very good start to his turn. Okay, it does say to spawn a new bounty, uh, a new monster on the board. And then we're going to take our next bounty card and pull that out of the eight that we have. So we have one in the swamp again. That's two in the swamps. Now we need uh, blue critters and, and we need rogues and beasts in the swamp. We're going to head that way with our woodling next turn, so that's good. We might head that way with... Uh, no, we're, we know where we're going with our... Um, guy next, I think. I don't know. So we got swamp, swamp, and wastelands. Uh, he could just move up to the. Well, let's, let's. Okay, he's got a lot he can do. He hasn't really. Ta he hasn't taken an action yet. He just. Uh, he got that free move from the po from the uh, heroic benefits, and then fought the mummy, and now he has to take his action. So let's do that. Okay, I think what he's going to do first is he is going to take his first action over here. I don't know if you can see me moving it, but uh, let's uh, just take a little glance over there. Uh, he is going to take his action and move into. Just want to make sure to the wastelands right here with our our um, woodling, and then he's going to now remember we have a way to get back. We have the pack pigeon. We can empty our pack without returning to the village. So he's going to do that at the end of the turn. I'm trying to see if I can maybe get him another bounty. Um, he is going to then take his second action to make a gather roll. Hoping for a potion so I can pull them. So one is an advantage card. I'm not going to argue about that. Let's see what he gets. He gets, ooh, this, the Star of Elodoro. That's a, 12, D, a D12. You can throw that thing. Okay, because it's ranged, which means if he uses it, he doesn't get hit. That's good, but we have one more action left. I think I can hunt there and see if we can pull something in into the wasteland that would be beneficial to us. If not, the the... Wild link, or we can move. We can continue to move to the swamp. I think that's what we're going to do. Third action, we're going to continue to move to the swamp. And so he ends up here in the swamp with the dungeons, um, and we'll be able to, because we got two, we can pull two things into the swamp next turn with him. Um, and he's got 
quite a bit of cash on hand, so we have things we can do with them. We can get advantage cards. We can do all kinds of stuff. So that is going to mark the end of his turn. Unfortunately, it's going to mark the end of the round, too, but that's okay. So we're going to clear his actions. He's resting now in the swamps there as he gets ready for, to deal with bad stuff. We're going to come over to the board here and end his turn by rolling our D10. A 1, so we have a heroic, uh, hero buff means we get to replace a lost hit point. We haven't lost any yet. We've been doing pretty good at that part. I'm just worried about the timing of it. I was hoping we could get to... Oh, and to, to end his turn, he is going to use the Pack Pigeon here. And what that's going to do is allow him to send this back to the, um, the uh, village. And we have now completed the first of our bounties. And uh, by the way, these all have little stories on them. Uh, those undead idiots keep wandering into the water. A uh, whole harbor is littered and taint, uh, with tainted blood, old bones, and tattered wrappings. It's just heartbreaking to see the dolphins trapped in those damn bandages instead of fishing our fishing nets. So, okay, so that means we succeeded at that, which simply means since we're looking at the board, we get to move this token up to five. So, uh, that's better. <laughs> we still have a ways to go. Um, but we're starting to fill up our board. The board's going to get harder because as we start to fill it up, we kill monsters that don't fit, we can't put on the board anymore. We're going to have to take them as hides and collect them and gather them. We haven't done any of that. So uh, that is going to be the end of our Slayer's full turn and the end of the round, um, which means that uh, we're going to go on to the next round. Now, you'll notice on this board, we're going to, as we turn the track one more time, we're going to pass this. We're going to roll right now for a um, an event. And also, there is a Hunter's Moon, which means all of the creatures on the board have a plus two to uh, to their attack rolls, which means it's a little tougher this round. And uh, we're going to have to make a do with that. What is a GM event, you might ask? Well, it is a uh, roll on a table that gives, is going to give us a random event. And we're going to roll these two dice. This, these are the tens, this is the zeros, and it's going to give us a numeric value of a 1 to 100. And we're going to roll, read the story. So don't read the story, you'll ruin it for yourself, but we're going to read whatever entry we roll. So we rolled a, a 12. Well, that's a very low entry. I hope that's good. Let's see. Adventures afoot. No, adventures afoot. You're headed home after a long journey when your hero's sense, uh, b sense begins to tingle. You don't know where adventure will summon you next, but you do know you'll answer the call. Maybe you'll end up with a story that will one day enthrall your grandchildren. Perhaps bards will someday regale weary travelers with your exports, exploits. But one thing's for sure. You've got to have the adventure before anyone can write songs about it. For each player who chooses to go wherever adventure takes them, uh, before their turn starts, they roll either a d10 if playing with the standard map or a d12 on the advanced map, which is on the other side of the board, to place the hero in a random space. Doing so will earn them a free heroic quest card at the start of their turn. Well, we're not using heroic quest cards, so I think we'll probably just end up not doing that um, because we're kind of where we want to be. However, that was the event that we got. Not that big of a deal. We're going to take our next turn, um, one more turn, guys, and then we'll end the episode. So let's do that. We're going to get on with our Woodling and take her turn. We know what she's going to do, I think, pretty much. But first, we got to do our open gather roll. Okay, let's do this and see what we get. We get a four and a seven. Okay, so four for her is going to be alchemy. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the Wingzo Flightonimus to return to the village. So she took that potion. And then a seven, we're going to draw a critter and put it in the seven space, which is where? Oh, the wasteland, right where we're at. Good, okay. Um, and, oh, it's not what we want, though. It is a werewolf. That does not, well, it, it does not help us. We want that in the swamp. It's in the wasteland. So we have a critter there in the wasteland that we don't want. That's okay. And then for, uh, four for our slayer on the open gather is alchemy as well. He will take the pharaoh monster. I think that's the right thing to do. Now, he, she might use one of her skills to hero swap. We can also animal handle. It says why hunting send the hunted monster nuts for hunting. We're not doing, we're not hunting. But we could do a hero swap. Putting the, well, we, well, we actually don't need, we need the werewolf in the wasteland, in the swamp, not the, uh, we need to draw the werewolf to the swamp. Well, we have a stealth of five. Oh, God, I really wanted to stay in the wasteland, though. I think for her first action, she doesn't really have any items. 
and she's out of money. So I think for her first action, she's going to gather, which means we're just going to roll a d4 and see what we get off her gather board. It's going to be a four. Oh, that's alchemy. That is such a waste. What a waste. Well, that's a waste of her first action. I was hoping to get a, an item. Um, let's see. Well, it says, while hunting, send the hunted monster to another space. Hunt again. I don't like that. Um, try to figure out what she wants to do because she's not really in the best position to fight this guy. The guy's a D10. She's going to stealth out is what she's going to do. Um, well, actually, let's do the... Yeah, okay, okay. Here's what we're going to do. So she is going to use one of her skills. She's going to use Hero Swap, which uh, means we're going to take her second skill token. We're going to put it in Hero Swap right here. And she is going to switch places with the um, um, barbarian or the, or the slayer. Now that's not an action. So for her second action, she's going to gather again. Let's hope this works because we really need a uh, some items right now. A four. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Well, that total waste of two actions right there. Okay. She is then going to use one of her potions. I should have done this in advance, but I didn't. She's going to use one of her potion bottles on her fair monster. It says, lure a monster into your space from any other space. We're going to take uh, this monster from Condyle Bay, this uh, mushroom, and we're going to pull it up to ourselves here. And then for our final action, we are going to gather again, and then we're going to try and fight that guy. So let's see how this goes. Now, if we roll a four now, at least we get to do something with it. We didn't. We rolled a two, so that's two coins. That's okay. Now, we do have to engage the mushroom. Now, the mushroom has a special ability of poison, which means if we take a hit, we actually lose a stat point as opposed to health. So we're going to use the last of... Oh, uh, well, do I want to do that or not? I think we still have our critical. We're, this guy's only using a D4. He gets no bonuses. We're on a D6. Sorry. Uh, where's the... Four, there it is, and a our D6 right here. So this is us right here. Um, I could use her short bow to make it ranged. We do have the critical, which means we can double our die roll. We're probably likely to win. Let's just roll and see what we get. Okay. Uh, two and a three. So, okay, so we, we lose right now, but if I use the critical, that turns us into a four. So we're going to do that, which means we successfully killed the mushroom in the swamp, which isn't what we wanted to do. Actually, it was in the wasteland. <laughs> God, I pulled the wrong monster, guys. Um, well, it's okay. Well, actually, it's fine. Here's what we'll do. We're going to take that and put that mo monster into our... I just really screwed up her turn. We're going to put it into our board right here. Okay. And then uh, that solves that. really wasn't paying attention to what was going to be effective there, was I? All right. Uh, well, we still have one more action left to go. I could do that again, but I don't, need, I don't have any cards or anything. And I didn't get, I pulled the wrong creature in there. I need to pull the wasteland, not the swamps. I need a beast, which we have, only one we have on the board is a werewolf or a swamp creature. We have D8s and D10s, and I have no stuff. Um, well, it's too late now. I already used it to get that critter. Gosh. Oh, you know what? I don't think I did win that. Hold on, hold on. Bad news, guys. I forgot about the plus two hunter's moon. So yeah, we didn't win. We uh, had a three plus two, that's a five. So we can turn that into a four with the uh, critical, but then we're going to have to spend... Yeah, is there friendly terrain there? There is terrain. We have to spend something to do this. I think we're going to have to spend... Because um, I don't want to take a stat hit. We're going to spend her friendly terrain. It says plus two to your combat roll when sharing a space with any terrain. Um, I think dungeons are considered terrain. I, I'll double check that, but uh, I believe so. Because um, I think it just shows, yeah, 16 environment minis uh, in the game. Um, I'm going to look that up real quick just to be sure I'm not cheating. No, I don't think she can do that. It's Dungeons are noted as dungeons, not terrain. So I don't think that's possible. I think we have to be in an actual terrain space. Um, well, that means that she's going to take a stat hit. And we really only have one I'm willing to take a hit on. So we didn't kill the mushroom, and we'd have to fight it again. So we're going to have to do that. God, this is this has got a lot rougher for us. I guess I would not, in knowing that, in knowing I couldn't do that, I would not use this. We would just take the hit. We're going to take a hit to our stealth. So I need to get a stat of four out for the stealth block right there. And that's that. Now, still engaged. I have a choice. I can chip out and run away, or I can fight. 
Um, I can get rerolls. Well, let's reroll. Let's reroll. I still got my critical. Let's see what we can do. Remember, plus two here, so I got to remember that. That's another five, but I have a four. So now, if I use the critical, that will put it up to eight, and we will then win. So okay, took us took a stat hit on it, but we we did beat it. And I'll put this mushroom in there. Should, probably should should have run away from it, but I'm not a running away type of guy. And then we still have one more action left. She is going to um, she's going to hunt. No, because then she'll have to fight again. She's going to spend her third action to gather one more time. A two is going to be two more coins. She'll be able to buy stuff later, but that is going to mark the end of her turn. And let's roll uh, on the... Hot. So we're going to go back to rest now. She is resting. And we're going to roll on this table. That tur I really botched that turn up. That was terrible. A uh, personal skiff. While you're in the harbor, you may move to any other single space but the village. So that's we can get around the water. We have a personal skiff. A Sweetwater Harbor there. That's the only place we can do it, but that's okay. I think I should say the harbor or the bay. But it's okay. The harbor. All right. Anyway, we're going to go now to our, our slayer. He is there with that werewolf. First going to make his open gather roll. It's a one and a one. Okay. One on his board is advantage cards. Let's see what he gets. He gets a sniper's bow, D10 range. That's good. I like that. And he's one away from his carry limit, so i got to remember that as well. A one for her is wild. She, too, the, our woodling will take a um, hatchet of no regrets. D8, if you lose the hit points, gain an advantage card. Okay, well, that's good. So she's got that. That was uh, from her wild draw right there. So she's got a weapon now that she can fight with. That's great. And we're going to put a critter in thick brush. Not that that helps us a whole lot. Well, it might. You never know. Uh, it is going to be, oh, the vampire. So the vampire's out. Now remember, we already put the dragon in the vampire's space. So killing the vampire would give us hides. That's not a terrible thing. This is what I was talking about earlier. So we're going to have to start collecting hides as well. But we've got to get bounties. So we're in a place in the wasteland where we can get a bounty, but not from the creature we're dealing with. So first thing that he's going to do, I think, is for his first action... He's got one potion he could uh, gather. I think he's got a lot of money. I think we're going to spend two coins. And I don't think we have to be... Yeah, we're going to spend two coins to gain an advantage card. He, that'll fill him up and give him all the advantage cards. He had D8, Butterfly Sword, which is ranged. I like that. And then go. let's go look at what we're going to do. Now, I don't really want to kill the beast that's there. So, um, I want to send it to the swamp. But we do want to kill something in the wasteland. So he is going to first use his fair monster to pull this mushroom into here. This actually works out okay because I killed the other mushroom for a board. This one we're going to use for a bounty. So uh, in the wastelands. So that's 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 okay. They don't have. Uh, we'll have another turn we can latch on to here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's. So we did that. Oh, we have a ton of weapons. Uh, we're going to then take our first official action by gathering. I'm hoping for the best here because I don't want an advantage card. We're full. Let's see. A three. A three is wild. That's great. So we can, we're can. we going to get some alchemy going. I think um, he will take a potion in his... Uh, he'll take Wingzo Flightim Flightimus so he can return to the village. That was his first action. His. I think then he's going to engage the mushroom see if we can get the... Uh, get the um, uh, bounty for this mushroom that's there in the area. So the mushroom is going to be a D4. We're going to have him here. He's got a D6 right now, but we got so many weapons, we're going to change that out. Let's see. Um, yeah, we got lots of stuff. He hasn't used any of the skills yet either. We're in good shape with him. He's, in, he's doing great. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to use that on this wimpy little thing. We get a free reroll with this. I could use this monster trap. These are really good. I think we're just going to use the Monster Trap. It is a D12. Maybe that's overkill. I could use the D6 with a free reroll. Let's do that. Well, Hunter's Moon. This is a plus two, right? So I don't know if I want to do that. Let's let's make sure we kill this thing. We're going to use this. We've been holding on to it for a while. That would give us a D12. Yeah, it's overkill. I know, but that's all right. And we still have skills and stuff we could do. I could just use a skill to get a broadsword, which is a d10, but we also have the ability to get a plus one combat roll. So let's just, and we also have dog mud, we could get rerolls. So let's do that. This is ranged, by the way, which if, if it does, it will not do a stat damage to me. 
if we lose, but I don't think we will. Okay, so four, five, six. So right now we're tied. I will spend a skill point to do a brute force, which gives me plus one to combat rolls. So four, five, six, six, seven, we win. Uh, but we had to use one of our skills. So this mushroom gives us this bounty. I'm going to put it in this pack. The mushroom goes back in the bag. And we're going to draw another monster. And we'll put that monster in the seven in um, in the wastelands where he is. He is. I've been getting lucky with that part, haven't I? Um, and this is going to be another green creature. This is going to be a flesh leech. It too has poison, but it's a little tougher with a d6 plus two. So that's a d6 plus four this turn. He's already in that space, so he's going to have to engage it. Maybe he's not so lucky. Um, but he can always automatically fly back to the village. I'm not too worked up about it. And then we're going to get one of our remaining bounty cards. Let's see what we get. Uh, the fields. Oh, good. That's good because we actually have a cre creature like that in the fields. A uh, bandit is already there. It's a orc. That is fantastic. Okay. So here we are. Uh, yeah, I'm allergies, guys. Sorry. Uh, I could use the personal if what's mine is yours. I could do that. Um, we haven't lost any hit points. We have to fight some things. Um, I don't want to, I really don't want to kill the werewolf there. I don't. I want to get, I want the werewolf to end up in the swamps with our woodling to fight somehow, some way. I mean, she could pull it there. Hopefully, if she gets another potion, we can pull it there. Um, I think what he's going to do then, we can get to, yeah, he's going to move, which means he's going to have to make a stealth roll. So let's do that. He's also going to spend one of his coins on a horse, and hopefully it survives the trip. Because uh, he has to move out of this. He's disengaging. Wait, actually, I don't think he can do that. I don't think he, you can move through. I'm going to double check that. I don't think he can just disengage by moving. I'm going to check. I just want to always uh, want to make sure I'm trying to do it right. Let me check on this. I don't think I'm allowed to just disengage there. So I think we could just fly back. Though I could kill those things. I mean, we need that flesh leech. I could kill the flesh leech first and then fly back. I think that might be a good move. So let's engage. But we're going to engage. We have to do a round with the flesh leaves at least. Uh, but let's do that. So see if we can kill him. Now he is a D6 plus 4. So we want to be pretty secure here. Because remember it's a hunter's moon. I think we'll do the sniper's bow. That gives us a D10. And we won't take any damage back. So there's our D10. There is... Uh, it's d6. Now, what else do I have here? I could do Berserk and just automatically take a hit point to get plus 4. So we can do better against this thing. So we're going to leave anyway. So let's do that. We're going to use our Berserk ability. Uh, which means we get to get plus 4 to our combat roll, but we lose 1 hit point. Boom. Okay, so the hit points basically go on the village, but I'm just going to put it above his character. When they go back to the village, they get it back. So we're at now a d10 plus 4. He's at a d6 plus 4. Let's see what we get. A 6, that's a 10, but we got an 8. We got a 12. We beat it, but we did use our bow. We got rid of this flesh leech, which means that we get to put it on our board. So we're, so we're definitely collecting things. So the flesh leech goes here. We succeeded, but we did take a damage to do that. Um, and then he is going to use his Wingzo Flightonomus to go back to the village. Swoosh, where he will do a couple things. One, he's going to get um, uh, this. He'll rest for free, and he's going to spend two coins to to uh, get to refresh his two skill markers that he's used on his board. Uh, and his health will come back, and he's going to turn in this bounty, which is great. Because we will then get to get a new another turn out of this. Let's do that. So we are now at six turns, but things are getting going to get a little tougher for us. Um, and he is back in the village with two actions left. So I think while he's there, he will gather. He has no potions right now, so gathering is not going to hurt him at all. So action number two will be to gather. Yeah, we've only actually used one action of four. That's alchemy. That's great. He's going to use his fair monsters. He'll put that up, and then his. He's going to, for his third action, he's going to gather again since he's in the village. He could train, but he only has one coin left. We're going to train anyway, but we're going to use this. His last action is going to be a three. That's going to give him a wild, which means we're going to uh, take a, um, a Wingzo Flytonomus potion again. So he's got those set up. 
Actually, no, I take it back. He's going to take an advantage card. Uh, we get, okay, what do we get? Uh, did I mention I put strict 7 all over my weapon? Plus 3 to combat rolls. Okay, that is a good thing. I like that a lot. Then he's going to spend one coin to go to uh, the Fountain of Yours. Now, what that means is when you spend one coin, you roll a d6. If you happen to roll over a stat, you can increase it, but otherwise you can't. I want to get his uh, strength up. If I can, let's see what he gets. A three, so nothing happens. So we just wasted the coin. Uh, not going to complain about that. That's the end of his turn. We have all three of these used. We didn't use any of them. I'm okay with that. We're just going to leave it alone, and that's going to mark the end of his the round again. So that was a pretty tough or interesting round for us. We didn't get what we wanted out of it. A little bit, maybe, but uh, this is going to go up to here, and when we come back next turn, we will start the next round. So, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you're enjoying D6. Man, I really botched up the Woodlings turn. It, it ended up okay, because we got the Flesh Leech out of it onto our board, which we needed anyway. Uh, now we need a Spider, but, yeah, we need to start to... We need to wrap this up, because we only have... Like, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more... Uh, creatures. We only have two more turns, and the best, the most amount of turns we can get are 12. So we're definitely behind. We got to try and do a little better than what we're doing right now if we're intending to win, which we are. So, guys, thanks again. I appreciate you watching, subscribing, all that good stuff. Please uh, share, like, subscribe, and uh, enjoy uh, our gaming experience together. So, take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.